Our scientific lecture is uh, divided into three main topics called the work packages. Work package uh, number one is about regulatory proteins uh, and I'm going to talk ab about this now. Uh, our final aim is the understanding of uh, the photosynthetic processes uh, and uh, the regulation of these photosynthetic processes in uh, algae and plants. Uh, Christo Puschen and, uh, and I are working on the molecular mechanisms uh, uh, that uh, plants uh, and, uh, and algae adopt uh, to cope with high light stresses. Especially we are investigating uh, the, the functions and structure of uh, several proteins, uh, for example LHCSRs, uh, like light, light harvesting complexes, stress related, and uh, uh, photosystem 2 subunit S and light harvesting complex uh, associated to photosystem 2 uh, and th that that are shown that were shown to be involved in this uh, uh, dissipation processes we have already talked about uh, the regulation of uh, the light harvesting phase in another video this uh, slide is just a, a summary of uh, how uh, and uh, and also why there is uh, the need for it for this regulation in the thylakoid membrane. When uh, light reaches the, the thylakoid membranes, uh, it is first collected by antenna complexes that are uh, pigment binding uh, protein complexes. Uh, and uh, their role is to deliver excitation energy to the photosystem core, where charge separation occurs and the energy is now stored uh, as a redox potential. From here on, a series of redox reactions take place during photosynthesis that uh, culminate with the synthesis of ATP and uh, high energy chemical storage compounds. During excess light conditions, uh, this photosynthetic reaction redox uh, chain is inhibited uh, because uh, more photons uh, are absorbed than the ones that can actually drive photochemical processes. But uh, and therefore, this uh, excitation energy uh, can lead to uh, damage of the delicate components of the photosynthetic membrane. Fortunately, plants and uh, algae have developed mechanisms called uh, non-photochemical quenching to uh, non-photochemical quenching processes to uh, dissipate the excess of, of energy safely through heat. Different uh, types of organisms have developed different strategies to cope with, uh, with high light stress. Uh, in, the in the green algae, several proteins called uh, LHCSRs, uh, light harvesting complex uh, stress related, uh, are, uh, are found to be the main factors of, uh, of MPQ. In uh, Arabidopsis uh, uh, thaliana, in higher plants, uh, uh, another type of protein is uh, called the photosystem 2 subunit S and is found to be essential for this uh, process as well. It's very interesting that, uh, um, that transition organisms uh, such as mosses uh, have both, uh, express both proteins. Christo from University of Verona is uh, trying to understand the function and the structure of both proteins in the, in the thylakoid membrane. What is interesting is that while LHCSR is pigment binding, PSPS is not pigment binding. The, the function of, of both in the thylakoid membrane during MPQ is still largely unknown. Through uh, mutation ana analysis, uh, uh, and expression uh, and upon expression of these proteins in uh, in homologous and heterologous systems, uh, Christo is trying to characterize their function during MPQ. He is also trying to understand what is their integration in the thylakoid membranes uh, and their interactions within uh, uh, supercomplexes and outside in the rest of the, the thylakoid membranes. Uh, I am working it at Queen Mary University of London. Uh, trying to understand the molecular mechanisms uh, of uh, uh, this MPQ process uh, in higher plants. I am working on the membrane dynamics uh, uh, whereby thylakoids uh, can sw uh, are found in uh, uh, an efficient light harvesting state uh, or in uh, MPQ uh, energy dissipative state. It was found that uh, 
uh, apart from PSPS, uh, other proteins uh, and other conformational changes uh, occur during uh, the MPQ state. And MPQ is accompanied by antenna aggregation and the conversion of violaxanthin to another carotenoid called zeaxanthin. Apart from membrane dy dynamics, I am interested in also in the dynamics of single complexes that uh, uh, were shown to uh, be involved in conformational changes uh, whereby they switch uh, between a light harvesting state and an energy dissipative state. Therefore, I am applying a time-resolved spectroscopy technique to try to understand how the energy transfer pathways change between one state and another one, and what pigment receives the energy and quenches in the energy dissipative state. Uh, evergreens are facing extremely, extremely challenging conditions, especially during winter, where uh, we have an extremely cold temperature and concomitant high light exposures. Nonetheless, evergreens are able to maintain green needles all over the winter. The mechanism that they adopt to cope with these uh, extremely challenging conditions uh, is uh, to enhance a sustained uh, type of MPQ, of uh, thermal dissipation. Fushan, working from Umea University in, in Sweden, is trying to understand the molecular factors that uh, assure this uh, sustained quenching, and uh, especially he is testing the hypothesis uh, that uh, PSPS or a similar protein is related to these sustained quenching uh, processes. Uh, he is uh, using the genomic data av available on spruce and uh, uh, transgenic plants to understand what, what are the regulatory processes that are happening uh, during winter time and uh, to visualize the state of the membranes uh, between summer and winter. Alba from uh, Goethe University in Frankfurt uh, is uh, using a genetical ap approach uh, to manipulate the carotenoid synthesis uh, uh, pathways in diatoms uh, that are a group of uh, photosynthetic algae to uh, reach a higher production of fucoxanthin. Fucoxanthin is uh, a carotenoid that is on the spotlight because of its uh, uh, antioxidant, anti-inflammation and anti-cancer uh, properties uh, and uh, for its overall beneficial, uh, beneficial effects on human health and consumption. W what she is uh, uh, aiming to do is to identify all the key steps uh, uh, that are rate limiting in this pathway and trying to overexpress the enzymes to, our, to reach a higher fucoxanthin production. Through complementation tests in Arabidopsis, she is also trying to understand and characterize uh, the function of uh, several enzymes that are still unknown in diatoms, uh, such as uh, beta carotene hydroxylase. Her aim eventually is. Uh, uh, to reach the production of a living factory whereby supplying water, CO2 and other nutrients uh, we can have a mass production of uh, carotenoids that are, that are essential and beneficial for human health and consumption. Environmental conditions uh, uh, are becoming less and less favorable for crop plants. A way to modify uh, the growth uh, and the well-being and the overall fitness of a plant uh, is uh, to apply biostimulants. Biostimulants are uh, types of uh, isolated compounds or microorganisms that are acting in a be beneficial way to the growth and well-being of the plant. Biostimulants in general are giving uh, a higher tolerance to abiotic stresses and uh, are working uh, in uh, the uptake of nutrients uh, from, uh, from the soil. Mirella is uh, working uh, from a photon system instrument uh, in um, Czech Republic and uh, she, is, uh, she is trying to identify and test the effect of different biostimulants in the growth of, uh, of plants. To monitor these effects she is developing also new automated uh, plant uh, phenotyping techniques uh, whereby she can assess uh, different uh, uh, phenotypical and uh, uh, physiological and biochemical characteristics of plants uh, in a non-invasive and non-destructive way. The aim is eventually 
to translate all this knowledge uh, into progresses uh, in agriculture and basic research.